Pictured here is a solid state DC relay. It has heavy duty screw terminals. The input is 3 to 32 volts DC. That's your control voltage, apply voltage. The relay turns on. Your output is rated 5 to 60 volts DC up to 40 amps. Here's another version, 3 to 32 volts DC input again, but its output can switch up to 4 amps at 200 volts DC. And of course, here's another one that can go, its output is up to 220 volts DC at 3 to 32 volts DC input. In an early, another video, I had discussed the input circuits, which I won't cover here. Now we're going to cover the output circuits and what is particular to them. Here is a MOSFET switching circuit, which you could look at it as sort of a solid state relay. This is because it has an optocoupler that isolates the input control from the output switching. Apply 5 volts from an Arduino, Raspberry Pi, whatever, LED lights up, it turns on this phototransistor within the optocoupler. Once this switch is on, VCC is switched to the gate of the MOSFET, and this is a bleeder resistor, turning on the MOSFET and powering up the load. As illustrated here, it happens to be a light bulb. Well, so far so good, but we're stuck with two limitations with VCC. One of the problems is we have to derive the VGS voltage from the existing power supply. As this is built, it will work up to about 20 volts safely because there's two limitations. This optocoupler's collector emitter breakdown voltage is around 30 volts. And the voltage gate the source of the MOSFET in this example is 24 volts. So you don't so you have to run VCC under 24 volts to safely use this. Um, a lot of problems exist here using these type circuits. Um, you can use if you want to use a higher voltage VCC, you can use resistor dividers, zener diodes, and all kinds of other stuff. But as this is built, it really has four connections. VCC, ground, um, the MOSFET connection, and another connection back to VCC for the load. Not exactly what we want to do. All right, this is an illustration of your basic MOSFET circuit. It's easy enough to use in-channel MOSFETs on the more ground side of it, where the headache seems to occur for most people is in the high side or the positive side of the circuit. In this case, you can use solid-state relays up here. What's the advantage of solid-state relays? Simpli simplicity and reliability are your big advantages. Let's look at the internal block diagram of a typical solid state DC relay and see what we can find out. Once again, we have an LED emitter, but we have a control circuit that consists of a number of photodiodes in series. Instead of trying to derive the gate switching voltage from say plus VDC, we generate the voltage based on the light output of the LED across the photodiodes operating in their voltage generating mode. So what do you get? LED comes on, plus a positive voltage is generated across the gate source circuit and your MOSFET switches on. Note that you can connect the load like this. Note the internal diode too, that's part of the MOSFET. You can connect the load like this, or you can connect it like this. It doesn't matter because being with two outputs, you can connect either side that you want to 
with great ease. This is a lot easier than this mess. This will work fine if you're if you're not using a particularly high VCC. But if you're doing something in this case and you have a load that's 200 volts, then you can get a solid state relay that can handle 200 volts DC. Again, a, a brief review of photodiodes. It consists of a PN junction that is optimized to respond to light input. It generates a small low current voltage. We're talking about in the microamp region. And uh, this would probably be 10 meg as opposed to 100k. I mean, these just do not produce that kind of voltage. And in fact, if you tried to put this across it, the current is so low, it would probably not read anything. You can buy optocouplers like the PVI-8050N, which is just a bunch of essentially photodiodes in series. I did that and I could not get it to work properly. It's, it's, its output current is just so low, it's not worth doing this. And again, what you do, the LED turns on, you generate a voltage, 7 or 8 volts, it switches on the MOSFET, and off you go. This is a, this is what your silicon chip would look like. Here is an array of uh, photodiodes that generate the voltage. This here is the control circuitry. Here's another variation of that using two MOSFETs. Again, this is for illustration purposes only. I would not try to build these for one main reason. This part is very expensive. It will cost you more than most solid state relays will. And then you hope you better hope you got the right MOSFETs. So don't try to build this. The parts are too expensive you would be better off just buying the manufactured relay itself. All right, this is the inside of one of these um, solid state relays as far as its photo optic system goes. You have an emitter that's illustrated here. You have some kind of silicone resin that's clear and then you have your photo detector. These come, I think, from Om Semiconductor and they have differing characteristics. You can have high voltage isolation or you can have highly sensitive detectors, depending on which one you're going to get. Let's look at this here. This is um, easy to figure out. Here is your emitter. Here is your string of photodiodes. Here's your MOS gate discharge circuit. Now here you have two MOSFETs built they are constructed exactly like what you see here and either though you got terminal one and two you, it, that you can hook it up any way you want to there is no plus or minus and then you have a common they bring that out so under some circumstances you can the way this is constructed, you can parallel T1 and T2 and take the current through C plus the parallel T1 and T2, or you can connect T1 and T2 in series with any other load, and it doesn't matter the polarity. There is no plus or minus on this unless you parallel T1 and T2. Here is some Omron basically PC board mount relays. Some are surface mount, some are through hole and so forth. Here is a Crydom CMX. This is a PC board mount. In fact, that was the, based on the illustration I had earlier. This is the Crydom internal schematic. 
Again, this is a PC board mount, 3 to 10 volts DC in, 10 amps at 100 volts DC out. Uh, this does have thermal epoxy on it, but it really doesn't have anything to connect a heat sink. So if you're pulling 10 amps through this thing, it's probably going to get warm. And again, now we're back to our H-bridge circuit. And okay, let's look at the transist, the MOSFETs I normally use, 9 amps at 200 volts. Well, this is, uh, of course, 10 amps at 100 volts DC. You could use a pair of these to switch up to, I don't know, 8, 9 amps at 100 volts with an H bridge. It's this simple to hook up. So you really should consider using these or that's all I can tell you about solid state relays, particularly the DC models. So thanks for listening to this short lecture. Um, visit my website at www.bristolwatch.com.